It is now time for the Robertsonian Sports Report with Chris Styles on 97.1 FM, 1340 AM, WAGR in Lumberton, covering sports for Robinson County. Now here's your host, Chris Styles. And a good Thursday morning to you as we begin the Robinsonian Sports Report here on WAGR. I'm your host, Chris Stiles, sports editor at the Robinsonian. And we'll take 30 minutes or so to uh, take a quick glance at sports around Robinson County uh, you know, over the last week and uh, some things coming up as well. So uh, jumping right in, uh, of course, it's it's March, it's basketball tournament time and UNCP uh, had both of their uh, men's and women's basketball teams participating in the NCAA tournament last weekend. Uh, the men's team played Catawba in the first round uh, and went to their fourth straight overtime game as it happened, and the Braves lost 98-94. to um, That stretch of four straight overtime games dating back to their regular season finale, both conference tournament games and then this NCAA game as well. Free throw shooting was really key in this game. Uh, Catawba got to the line a lot, 51 times, made 39 of them. UNCP was 20 for 37, so just a little over 50% at the line. 7 for 18 in the second half, 4 for 8 in the overtime. And the Braves missed four straight free throws in the final 30 seconds of regulation that kind of allowed Catawba back in it. Um, Catawba was able to tie it with about eight seconds left. And then UNCP came to the other end and did not get a shot off at the end of regulation uh, on that final possession. So a kind of couple lapses in execution there. And then in the overtime, a couple key turnovers hurt the Braves' chances as well as uh, the free throw shooting once again. Um, Nigel Verdeer had a double-double with 19 points and 10 rebounds for UNCP. Jawan Carr, 16 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 steals. And then a couple guys off the bench that really – played well and contributed Dallas Gardner, a true freshman, scoring 14 points, and Amari Miller uh, down in the post scoring 15 for the Braves. Javion Jones led Catawba with 25 points. Caleb Wallace had 20. Um, and um, Javion Jones, the best player for Catawba, and, and played like it in this game. Uh, UNCP led 25-14 to 14 in the first half. Catawba closed it to a five-point game at the break and then cut it to one early in the second half. Pembroke stretched it back out. Uh, first to a 10-point lead, and then um, later to even a 12-point lead, 75-63, after Dallas Gardner kind of had a little uh, mini run on his own. Uh, but then Catawba closed regulation with a 9-1 run uh, with those free throw issues for the Braves. That got it to overtime, and then Catawba won in the extra session. So uh, season ends for the Braves with their uh, third straight top seed in a conference tournament. Um and the, they won the Conference Carolina's East Division title this year. Uh, and then, of course, won the conference tournament, um, which is a first under Coach Drew Richards. First time in several years that they've been able to do that. Um, and, and the first time since moving to the Conference Carolina. So, uh, certainly a good season for the Braves. Uh, disappointing way to end it. Uh, but Drew Richards said post postgame uh, that he's never been more proud of a group of players um, than this group and how they had really kind of banded together over the last couple of weeks, some internal adversity going on in that program, but um, that they had been able to move past that and, and get even tighter as a group. Uh, and the results showed, certainly in the Conference Carolinas tournament, and even in the NCAA tournament game, played well to an extent, just a few factors, including, I mentioned, the free throw shooting uh, that were adverse to their efforts to try to advance uh, in that game. Here on the Robinsonian Sports Report on WAGR, I'm your host Chris Stiles, sports editor at the Robinsonian. And the UNCP women's team also happened to play Catawba in the NCAA tournament, first round. Uh, and this is the Division II tournament, if there's if anyone's confused about that. Of course, the Division I NCAA tournament begins in earnest later today. Um, but um, the Lady Braves lost 58-48 to to top-seeded Catawba. And they actually played the same team in the same location at uh, the same time of day on the same day of the week. And these are largely the same two rosters. And then the game played out uh, largely the same as well as last year's tournament game for the Lady Braves, which was 
last year their first uh, NCAA tournament appearance in program history. And uh, said way of playing out was that the Braves struggled to make shots. Um, it wasn't quite as bad as last year, but nonetheless still 17 for 51, 33% from the floor, and 3 for 21, 14% from three. Um, Zaria Clark and Kalea Hall had 12 points each. Uh, Hall is a senior playing her final collegiate game um, just after getting all region honors as well. Um, and then uh, some of the other seniors played well as well. Courtney Smith, Anaya McManus, Lillian Flantos were all among the Braves' statistical leaders in this game. So final game for uh, that foursome as well as Alcina Purnell. Um, Janiah Downs and Nala Baker scored 13 apiece for Catawba. Uh, Lyric Thorne, who is their uh, best player, their leading scorer, was held to 10 points, about half of her season average. And, in fact, the UNCP defense played well enough to win this game, held Catawba to under 31% from the floor. Um, but two long scoring droughts for UNCP gave Catawba a 27-9 lead uh, in the second quarter, 32-17 at halftime. UNCP did make a run in the third quarter, closed it to a five-point game, 35-30. to um, But then another scoreless drought over the last five minutes of the third quarter, stretched it back out for Catawba. And the Braves were never closer than seven points in the fourth quarter. Um, so this ends a historic season for the Lady Braves program um, with uh, a Division II era record of 23 wins. Um, and they also won the regular season Conference Carolinas title and their second straight Conference Carolinas tournament championship after having never won it previously. So um, a great season for the Lady Braves. And this ends the career of head coach John Haskins. Uh, after 20 years leading the Lady Braves program, uh, he was previously men's coach for 10 years as well, and 35 years altogether as a coach at UNCP um, and a 43-year coaching career. So Coach Haskins rides off into the sunset. And since that tournament loss uh, on – that was on Friday, on Monday the uh, UNCP uh, athletic department announced – that Kendra Samuels Eaton will be the next women's basketball head coach. This is an easy transition for the Lady Braves program to a former John Haskins assistant. She served in Pembroke from 2017 to 21 uh, as both an assistant head coach and then the associate head coach under Haskins. Also has experienced the last three years as associate head coach at Western Carolina, which is her alma mater, uh, and was previously an assistant coach at NC Central as well as support staff roles at Wake Forest, Western Carolina, and with the ACC. Uh, she is a first-time head coach, but other than that, uh, having, other than that fact of having not been a head coach before, she's about as qualified as you can get. And um, Braves have three rising seniors uh, that you kind of always wonder about um, how they'll take a coaching change, and the rest of the team too, but um, these three players are going to be the leaders next year, and um, Kendra Samuels Eaton recruited Kelsey Adams, Hannah Russell, and Zaria Clark to Pembroke when she was an assistant. Coach Adams and Russell as well in their freshman year, um, then and did and then uh, didn't quite wasn't here long enough to coach Zaria Clark's freshman year, but um, but did coach those other two. And I spoke to Kelsey Adams at the announcement on Monday, and she was uh, very excited about Kendra Samuels Eaton becoming the head coach of the women's program. So. Um, and a universally loved hire, it would seem, around uh, the program and, and UNCP as a whole as Kendra, Kendra Samuels Eaton returns to the university. So, um, And you can read, of course, about all that in the Robinsonian. Uh, I did want to add, by the way, Catawba, uh, men and women, uh, both after advancing uh, by beating UNCP, they both lost in the second round of the tournament. Um, Catawba's men lost to North Georgia. The women lost to Georgia Southwestern. Um, and you can read about uh, the men's team, their game, the women's team, their tournament game, as well as uh, Coach Samuels Eaton returning to UNCP uh, on robisonian.com in the print edition of the Robisonian. I mentioned the NCAA tournament getting underway. I did want to um, not talk about it too much. Uh, we're focused local here, but – I uh, did want to make mention of it. Uh, we're just a couple hours away, in fact, from uh, the uh, really the first round getting underway. Of course, there's playing games the last couple of nights. but um, And 
Uh, North Carolina will play Wagner at 245 this afternoon. Uh, ACC champion NC State, didn't think a week ago I would be saying that, will play Texas Tech uh, at 940 p.m. And uh, on Friday, Duke will play, there's a four seed, will play Vermont at 710 p.m. Houston, which is coached by Pembroke native Kelvin Sampson, earned a number one seed, uh, as did the Tar Heels. And Houston will play Longwood at 9.20 p.m. on Friday. On the women's side, North Carolina plays Michigan State at 11.30 a.m. on Friday. Duke faces Richmond at 2.30 p.m. also on Friday. And then NC State, uh, who's a three seed in the tournament and gets to host the first couple of rounds, will play Chattanooga, which is Westmore, their coach's old uh, former employer. So uh, that's at 2.30 on Saturday. So... That's the uh, first round. But the NCAA tournament always a big event in this state, um, as so many uh, schools, uh, of course, four ACC schools, and then some other excellent programs as well outside the ACC. So, um, and I mentioned the Kelvin Sampson connection, as well as Houston potentially tries to make a run as a one seed. Just getting started here on the Robinsonian Sports Report. Coming up, we'll have Lumberton softball coach. Mackie Register to talk about uh, the Pirates' progress so far this season. That's coming up after the break here on WAGR. Back on the Robinson Hunting Sports Board here on WAGR, and we're joined over the phone by Lumberton softball coach Mackie Register. How's it going, coach? Going good, Chris. How you doing? Good. So, yeah, you guys are off to an 8-2 and two start overall, 6-0 and a start in the United 8 Conference as you try to defend as conference champs. So, um, how would you assess your team's progress here so far to start the season? Um, we're we're still uh, working on some things. To be honest with you, Chris, we we lost a couple games in the first week. Uh, we scheduled uh, Scotland and Hoggard, uh, two really good teams. That early on, us two losses we had. Uh, we weren't really. We had a couple of injuries that week in basketball. We're still playing, so we were missing a player. But uh, we we did that on purpose to just kind of see where we stood because we know that's the type of caliber team we're going to see hopefully in the, you know we make the playoffs and then and be able to play a team like that so but uh our our bats are coming around uh defense has gotten a lot better and we've been getting good pitching from a lot of samson and Anna, 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 ava hannah so yeah, you mentioned the offense coming around um double digit runs in five of the last six games now a couple of those have been against uh the bottom of the conference but some of the others have been against a little bit more quality of competition so how much is the offense clicking for you guys right now? Um, like I said, we got some girls that are, that are uh, started out on had a slow start, but they're they're uh, starting to hit the ball better. Our back of the lineup is really uh, starting to starting to take off. They were struggling early, but um, and and hit it usually it struggles at the early part of the year. So hopefully we're going to peak here at the, at the right time. And and uh, so we're all, with six zero in the conference. We'll take that though. <laughs> And Tierra Stewart, uh, Robson County Co-Player of the Year last year, and kind of picking up where she left off with um, five home runs and 15 RBIs so far. So how would you describe what she's able to do and how much power she brings to the table for you guys? Uh, well, it's Tierra, yeah, she, she's, she's one that's starting to heat up right now. She's, uh, she, can, she can hit it in all fields. Uh, she's uh, really worked hard in the off season. To uh, get to where she's at to maintain what she did last year. Of course, last year was a phenomenal year. Um, but uh, you know, she's uh, and the good thing about with our, our lineup, um, you know, a lot of people try to pitch around here, but we got you know, Lonnie Hannah's right, right behind her, which is tough to pitch around to both of them. So uh, you know, Lonnie's off to a good start as well. Uh, I think she's three doubles away from setting the school record and the career for doubles. So uh, you know, with with Steve be able to hit and not be able to pitch around her as much has is, is been a big plus. But, of course, in our, our, at the top of our lineup with the nine, uh, Merritt and, and, uh, and Alyssa Stone getting on base a lot uh, also gives her those opportunities for those RBIs she's getting. Yeah, Nia Merritt uh, was the other co-player of the year last year in Robson County, and um, she brings so much speed to the table, maybe the most speed I've covered in a softball player at the high school level, so um, how much does that added dimension help the offense as a whole? Well, I, I think we go kind of as Anaya goes. When she's on base, uh, making things happen, uh, she also allows us, you know, she steals so many bases that 
you know, we don't necessarily have to bunt her over all the time. So that gives us, you know, a chance to get her in the score position every time she gets uh, gets on first. So, uh, yeah, Nia, Nia is, uh, is definitely special at, at speed. You can't coach speed, so she, she definitely has it. She's the best person I've ever coached. And you mentioned Alana Hanna, who has signed to UNCP, Alana Sampson, who's signed to Lander. Um, you've got a couple other potential next-level players as well on the team. So um, just how deep is this group? Um, well, we've been you – yeah, know, I've got six seniors. Um, been coaching them since they were like eight years old. So this, we've been kind of looking forward to this year, uh, kind of building towards this year. Um, Anaya Merritt has signed with uh, North Carolina A&T. Right. Uh, we've got um, – and, and Tierra Stewart has also signed with UNC Pembroke yeah. as well, along with Alani and, and – and, Alana, that you already mentioned, but um, yeah, this, this group right here, I, I think our, you know, we've got a little bit of everything. We can we can beat you in different ways. We can we've got power in our lineup. We've got speed in our lineup. We can play small ball. Um, we uh, probably our one thing that we, you know we're one or two injuries away from from being very average. So we we don't have a lot of depth. That's our, our one my one concern going into the you know the, the last the second part of this conference run and stuff, but. Uh, but yeah, right now I'm very pleased with with our progress, and and like I said, we still we're still working on some things, still trying to get better every day. And um, you mentioned Halana Sampson and her success pitching, um, as well as Ava. But Halana's kind of been the key cog there, and has been for a couple of years. So, um, how would you describe her success in the circle? Yeah, it makes it makes it a lot easier when we know when we when you get good pitch. She's so consistent. She doesn't doesn't walk a lot of batters. Uh, uh, she's in the in the zone all the time, and, and she she's a bulldog for us in such situations. She get, she gets herself out of them, and um, it's it's it would be if I were playing, it'd be fun to play defense behind her. She works fast, and um, like I say, she, she's she keeps us in every game. We got a chance to win every game when when a lot of all. Here on the Robinsonian Sports Report on WAGR, I'm your host Chris Stiles, and we're talking with Lumberton softball coach Mackie Register and. You've got uh, your daughter, Carly Register, on the softball team. You've also coached your other daughter, Mackenzie Register, in uh, a couple other sports. So what are kind of some of the challenges and also the rewards of coaching your own children? Uh, it's definitely special. Um, yeah, Mackenzie, uh, uh, she's playing soccer right now, but she does, on all days, does come over and play softball with <laughs> as well, runs bases for us and stuff. Uh, and Carly and I have coached both of them in uh and, and tennis, okay, McKenzie in basketball, and and of course Carly and, and, and McKenzie in softball. But uh, yeah, it's I, I, I try not to treat them any different than, than anybody any other player on the team. Uh, sometimes it may be even a little harder on Carly and them, but uh, they expect that. Uh, they don't expect to have to. But it, it, at the same time, you know the success we've had and having having your daughter on the team um, is, is definitely. Uh, I mean, I'm blessed blessed for for, for that. Yeah. And coming into the Robson County shootout here, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend, and you guys finished second in that event last year. Um, and the team that you finished second to is not going to be in the field this year, South Brunswick. So, um, And you've got, as we talked about, a lot of experience. So what's kind of the outlook for you guys going into those three days of that event? Well, well we're going, we'll take them one at a time. But, our, you know, our ultimate goal at, at the beginning of the season is the slugfest is always uh, – a, a big uh, part of our season, and, and then we want to win the championship and uh, in, in the slugfest. And, and if we can do that, it, it also gives us a chance to kind of springboard ourselves to the second part of the season. So if we can, can keep it rolling, you know, win, win that championship, and then uh, you get a few days off to kind of regroup and then come back and, and then press for that second part of the season. If it's always a, a plus playing in that slugfest, yeah. And looking ahead to the state playoffs, um, five of Lumberton's last six playoff appearances have ended in the second round. So what can this year's team do to get further? And also what has made that such a difficult hurdle for the program? <laughs> I'm not sure. We, uh, <laughs> and the, the movie, uh, six, going to 60 seconds, you know, the, um, Nicholas Cage, they've got that one card, he calls Eleanor, that he can't uh, can't get by. And it seems like every year we've got an Eleanor we've got, <laughs> we got to get by. And, uh, we've been to the second round not only the last few years but a, a lot in my coach career, and we just can't seem to hurdle that second round. You know, before it used to be Southview to be, beat Southview. We beat Southview now. Uh, before we, in the old conference, we couldn't beat Richmond. We finally beat Richmond for in the conference uh, tournament championship. Uh, so this is our Illinois this year, and we we've got to focus on that second round. And 
and we won't be satisfied unless we make it to that third round. Then, then who knows after that? I mean, it's, you know. So. And you're also the girls' tennis coach at Lumberton, and um, that program's won a 4A conference championship each of the last two seasons. So what are some of the things that's led to that program's success? Well, um, I've got a lot of good girls in, in, in that program. Well, and the, the softball program, too, both, both of them. Uh, you surround yourself by good people, good things happen, I always say. Um, but our, our tennis program has, has done really well the last two years. Uh, led by, I and mean, I've got a couple of softball players that, that play tennis, uh, which is all, all, obviously with their footwork in tennis has helped them in softball. So, uh, like especially like Alyssa Stone at shortstop. But uh, uh, yeah, our tennis program, uh, and hopefully we're, we're you know we're still not going to fall off next year. We've got we're turning some people and and adding some some key parts of that. But uh, yeah, so uh, and that's something new for me too, coaching tennis the last three years. Uh, I wish somebody had told me about it thirty years ago because I really enjoy coaching. <laughs> the tennis program and, and uh, like I said just a bunch of good kids and uh, we do good in this area uh, of course once we get out of this area and start playing in Wilmington and Raleigh schools that are you know got the, the kids that are playing you know since they're five years old and and uh, and, and in, in the clubs and, and they got professional uh, trainers and stuff like that where we can't really compete with them but in our area we do very very well and our girls you know are most multi, a lot of multi-sport players that are playing tennis that's not their primary primary sport, so I think what we do a really good job with, with what we got. And coaching JV girls basketball as well. So, what are some things that Coach Ivy Johnson and the Lumberton fans have to look forward to coming up to the varsity level here in the next couple of years? Well, they only graduated two seniors this right. year, and one of them didn't finish the season because of an injury. So, basically, returning their whole team. Uh, got a few girls from the JV that will move up. Some freshmen that are coming in, they're going to be pretty good. And if you look at, you know, how the varsity girls started out this season, you know, they're really struggling. And you can see the gap close on, you know, some of their – even their losses were close losses. And uh, they just got better and better as the season went on. Ended up making the playoffs. Uh, I think they got a, a, a bright future uh, with, uh, with that varsity girls program. I think you'll see them uh, keep improving every year. And um, in addition to these three that you're currently coaching, you coach numerous sports at Lumberton. So describe your career and the experience you've been able to have and kind of the broadness of that. Yeah, it's uh, kind of jack of all trades. Master, <laughs> kind of that way to say. But, um, yeah, I've coached just about everything out here at some point. I've been here for this is my 31st year at Lumberton High School, um, and I plan on being here till McKenzie graduates, so another three more years. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I you know when I first started, I was uh, coaching football, bas- boys basketball, and baseball, all the guys sports stuff. Uh, I played baseball in college, so baseball I guess was my main sport at that time. I grew to love football. I really when I was offensive coordinator for Coach Brill and uh, enjoyed those days in, in football. But you know I got two daughters, so as, as time went on, I started transferring over to the girl sports because I wanted to be. You know, I didn't want to be at a baseball game. My girls playing softball, so I kind of transitioned over to the girls' sports, and uh, and, and enjoyed enjoyed that just as much. I mean, uh, get to coach my daughters, and you know, the girls. To be honest with you, the girls are a little bit easier to coach. They they listen a little better <laughs> than the boys do. You know, so, um, but uh, yeah, it, it's been uh, like they have coached girls basketball. Um, I've been a head boys basketball coach before football. Uh, I did even did indoor track one year. So it's done done a lot of different things here at Lumberton High School. But uh, I get one thing I'm, I am proud of. I don't think any other coach can say this. I did win a uh, shootout in basketball as a head basketball coach. We won it in baseball under Coach Hodges, uh, and and I won a, a softball mm-hmm. uh, best. So I got the trifecta. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And um, the NCAA tournament begins in earnest here in a few hours. So. I know you're a Duke guy. What's your bracket looking like? <laughs> well, uh, I, I always fill out two brackets. One, one with my mind and one with my heart. <laughs> uh, my mind has got, uh, I think UConn's going to win it uh, in that bracket. And then, of course, I'm going pulling for Duke. I got them winning it in, in my other bracket. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Mackie Register, thanks for joining us here on the Robsonian Sports Report. Uh, thanks, Chris. I appreciate you. Yep. And we'll be right back after this. Back on the Rob Sonny Sports Report, and for the last segment of the show, I wanted to touch on a couple 
topics here quickly, a couple quick hitters, if you will. Um, and one of those is that the Robinson Cup, uh, the girls' soccer tournament uh, for Robinson County, um, the semifinals were held last Saturday. Um, do have some news just in, uh, just as we were about to come on the air. Uh, we learned that uh, the finals were scheduled for this Saturday but have been postponed due to the threat of inclement weather and will be held on Saturday, April the 13th um, at uh, the third place match at, two at noon rather, and the championship match at 2 o'clock. Um, and um, the semifinals, Pernell Sweat beat St. Paul's 9 to nothing on Saturday. Um, Rams remaining undefeated on the season. Josie McLean, who is the two-time reigning tournament MVP, um, scored four goals in this game for Pernell Sweat. And then they got goals from Kendall and Oxenine, Ren Jacobs, Honor Waddell, Ava Giles, and Sarah Hunt, as well as three assists from Hunt, four from Anali Locklear, and one from Anicia Maines. Uh, Pernell Sweat's won the tournament every time it's been contested. Uh, this is the third edition of the girls' side of the Robinson Cup. Um, and as I mentioned, they're also off to an undefeated start of the season. They got a big win over the reigning uh, United 8 Conference champion in Cape Fear uh, as they began conference play. So um, the Rams off to a great start, not just in this tournament, but for the season. Lumberton beat Red Springs in the other semifinal 2 to nothing. This was closer than the first meeting, which Lumberton won by five goals. Uh, but Lumberton's defense continues its stellar early season stretch. Um, they've allowed seven goals in seven games. Five of those were in one game, so the rest of the schedule they've only allowed two. And then McKenna Bell scored both goals for Lumberton. Lindsey Campos Padilla had an assist, and then goalkeeper Olivia Bass had a clean sheet for the Pirates. Um, so this, this will be a title game rematch when it's held here in a couple of weeks um, from last year's overtime thriller that was won by Pernell Sweat. Um, and then St. Paul's and Red Springs will meet for third place uh, as well. Uh, in baseball, as spring sports uh, getting uh, in full swing here, um, Tuesday night I covered Fairmont and West Columbus. Fairmont won 11-1, to and R.J. Deese pitched a one-hitter for Fairmont, allowed an RBI double in the first inning, which was an unearned run, and then no hits the rest of the game. And Coach Kelly Chavis didn't think that Deese would be one of uh, the leaders on his pitching staff this year, but um, kind of has been proven wrong, at least so far, uh, by Deese's strong play, a couple of strong starts uh, his last couple of outings. And a lot of small ball in this game for Fairmont. They took a 2-1 to one lead in the third with a bunt and an infield single. And then uh, more of the same, really, in a six-run inning in the fifth that blew it open. Did take advantage of a West Columbus error, but um, took advantage by more small ball, essentially. And uh, Kenley Callahan did have a two-run homer late in this game uh, that helped stretch it to the 10-run margin. Uh, and this is a young-ish Fairmont team uh, that's played a tough schedule so far through non-conference. They're currently 4-5, and five, beginning conference play next week. And they're the defending champions of the Robinson County Slick Fest, which opens on March 30th. And then at the college level, uh, UNCP with a big series win over North Greenville last weekend. Uh, North Greenville is, uh, was number two in the country and in Division Two, and won the series opener 9-5, to five, but UNCP came back with a doubleheader sweep on Saturday, 13 to four, and six to three. Cody O'Connor had two homers, three extra base hits, and six RBIs in the doubleheader, and that gave gave him the team lead in RBIs for the season. And the Braves got strong pitching from kind of a uh, Johnny Holstaff type of game in the opener of the doubleheader, and then uh, John Jacobs, a local product, went five innings, uh, very strong outing for him in the second game. And then Chase Jernigan, their relief ace, with a four-inning save. Um, they like to kind of stretch him out about once a series um, as opposed to trying to get him in there uh, maybe for the ninth inning every day or, you know, like you might see at the big league level. And uh, they certainly did that uh, in this game with um, four terrific innings from him. Um, and a, a key double play um, in the eighth inning uh, really was the only threat he really got in, but the defense made a good play to get out of it. Um, that ends a North Greenville streak of nearly one year without a conference series loss. Um, and then Tuesday, UNCP went to USC Buford and got a 19-7 to win, so they continued their momentum there as well. Um, a weekend series against uh, Mount Olive has seen uh, the schedule altered because of weather, uh, the same as the Robbins Cup. Uh, in fact, a doubleheader will be played today up in Mount Olive, uh, try to get ahead of that weather. And then the finale of the series we played on Sunday between UNCP and Mount Olive. So um, 
You can read about all that on the Robinsonian, uh, online and in print. Um, I mentioned earlier UNCP hoops coverage. Uh, all conference basketball teams uh, for local high schools. Spring sports underway. Um, and then coming up on Saturday, uh, I mentioned the Robinson Cup postponed, but um, field dedication for uh, Ronnie Chavis Field at Purnell Sweat. Um, and um, that's the baseball field being dedicated to a longtime coach and administrator uh, for both Purnell Sweat and for public schools of Robinson County. Um, and then also the Robs County Senior All-Star Game for basketball will be Saturday evening. So a busy day locally on Saturday. And then I did write a story this week as well about um, youth baseball and softball officials are needed in Robson County. Um, Lumberton Youth Baseball Association, Lumberton Softball Association, uh, West Robinson, Fairmont Civitans, and Robson County Little League as well. And those are all under uh, the uh, purview of the Southeastern Officials Association. Um, and there's an informational meeting coming up on Sunday. You can find that information in the story. Um, but, you know, there's a potential long-term existential threat to broader youth sports if some younger officials don't step up. Um, there's a lot of uh, older officials that have done it for a long time, but um, they're kind of seeking some new blood and uh, making sure that um, that can continue um, and, and try to, um, you know, move it along and, and get new and younger officials in the pipeline um, and at, at the youth level, but um, also some upward mobility um, to move up uh, to officiate at the high school level and beyond. So um, that's also a story uh, online, and that will be in the paper on uh, the weekend paper of the Robsonian. Uh, for Paul Matthews, Behind the Scenes, I'm Chris Stiles. Thanks to Mackie Register for joining us, and thanks to you for joining us as well. We'll see you next week here on the Robinsonian Sports Report on WAGR.